you sure you don't want any bacon? Because I could easily get you some from the cafe. No, 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 no. This will be fine. Fine. Okay. I never have what hotels call the full English breakfast. What who does these days? Except in hotels. Fancy oversleeping. <laughs> Usually. I wake at about seven without fail. Oh, it's my fault for not setting the alarm clock. <laughs> anyway, Gail would have woken us up. Oh, is she, uh, is she due? No, 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 don't panic. Not for another half hour. That's if she's on time. I just didn't want to offend her moral sensibilities. Gail, offended? She'd have brought us a cup of tea up. And, um, how are your sensibilities the morning after? Hale and hearty. How about yours? Oh, I'm well pleased with life. Well at them for a long time. Uh -huh. Better late than never. Couldn't find the shop. Oh, you've not got odd socks on again. <laughs> I found it. I'm going to bring my stuff. Do you Mum? No, no. Everyone knows what a goody goody you are. Hey, all right, you two. Um, we will find, Nicky, that men's socks have this habit of keep disappearing. There's an invisible sock-eating animal what goes round pooching them all. <laughs> There's not enough milk. Well, go and get some. He's keeping it up, isn't he? Mm. I'll talk him round, don't worry. Yeah, well, if he's still not talking by the time that social... Yeah, well, he won't be able to slag me off then, will he? And won't be able to say he'd, he'd prefer to be adopted by a pit bull terrier either, if he's not speaking. It's not funny, Martin. It's very serious. Yes, well, I'll talk him round. I'll have a meeting out of my hand again, just you see. It's games today, isn't it, Nicky? Oh, uh, well, if it stays fine. David's in a good mood. Might come and watch you. I'll be the one that's jumping up and down and clapping every time you do something brilliant, like scoring a hat-trick. Eh? Nicky, Martin's speaking to you. I'm not speaking to him, am I? What's this money? I was hoping you wouldn't find that. Well, what is it? It's my nest egg. <laughs> Some nest egg? It must be nearly 50 quid, eh? £61.50. Oh, and you keep telling me you're stony, do you? Well, I am until weekend. Well, what's this for? It's for... I don't know. It's for emergencies. A holiday, perhaps. <laughs> holiday, eh? The way we're fixed. Oh, right. It's so that we're not living from hand to mouth. We've got a bit behind us. I'm not down to our last penny, are we? It's so that we can buy things for Rosie. It's just a comfort, Kev. I don't feel as desperate every Wednesday and Thursday. Oh, and where's it all come from? I've saved it. Pound here and a pound there. It soon mounts up, that. A little squirrel, aren't you? You're not mad up here. Oh, I'm not mad. We're not mad, are we? Mm. Put your application in yet, have you? Application? Your planning application for your Mickey Mouse extension. Well, forget it, mate. You've got no chance. Not with everybody round here against you. Everybody round here? I presume that means you're a foghorn of a wife, Jack. Who else have you got? And by the way, stray cats and dogs, poor prints, don't count. Oh, are you shouting at now? Not him again. I thought we'd agreed to keep our heads down. Well, he started it. I don't care who started it. I don't want any more bother about this extension. You know the trouble it caused in the pub? You threatening everybody in sight. That's only Duckworth. Betting Alec reading you the riot act. It's humiliating as well as upsetting. For God's sake, let's have some peace and quiet. At least till we know you can get permission to build the thing. It's not worth the hassle. Well, you won't say that when the wee girl arrives you've got a nice new nursery. Oh my god. He hasn't sent a priest down to us, has he? Don't be so daft. Morning for you. Morning, Father. Ah, oh, uh, hello, Father. Donald. I have not at home then, Donald. She's working, Father. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Shop in the corner, isn't it? No, no, she's at Better Buys now. Oh, really? Oh, I suppose she must have told me. Uh, does he want her for, uh, 
Is there trouble in the family, Donald? Oh, you mean this business with Martin, dragging young Nicky off football feet till the day? A bit extreme, wasn't it? Yes, yes, I suppose it was, but you don't know the full story. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. Have a seat, fellow. It's not all young Martin's fault. I'd be surprised if it was Nicky's. He's a fine young chap. It sounds it's actually. He's her grandson, isn't he? And her dead son's child. She behaves as though she was his father. Especially since Martin came on scene and Gail married him. Isn't Ivy happy with that? They're talking about adopting your Nicky now. So his name won't be Tilsley anymore, will it? Ah. Uh, Ivy feels she's losing him. Exactly, father. She interferes at the drop of an app, getting to be an altar boy, getting him in your football team. Now that is her way of showing Gail and Martin that she knows better than them what the kid wants. It's a... What's the word? It's an obsession, Father. She just won't listen to reason. It's causing no interruptions. Poor old Ivy. Mm, poor old everybody, Father, including me. And Piggy in middle, aren't I? So when are you seeing him again, then? Next week, next year, who knows? I'm becoming a fatalist order. Life deals me the cards and I just... Hey, come on. Listen to her, girl. She'll be telling us next that Ken Barlow is just a good friend. I mean, would you believe that? What? What's up with you sitting there brooding? Well, I was just thinking how much simpler life would be in solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, they think of it as a punishment. Mm. She's got a point. Oh, no. It's Ivy poking her nose in again. That's what that's all about. Honestly. That woman, she's got a nose like a trowel. Oh. Anyway, what are we talking about? Oh, yes, now. You and Ken. Well, there's nothing to talk about. Oh, come on. What do you really think of him? I mean, you must have formed some opinion by now. Well, he's a very nice man. <laughs> he's very considerate, which is more than can be said for most of the fellas that I've known. I mean, they thought being considerate was telling you they only got one clean shirt left. Or coming home at midnight, only half cut. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> What? Make any progress? In what respect? You know. Yes. Really? Do you know? What? He's kinky. How? He kept his eyes open when he kissed me goodnight on the doorstep. <laughs> Well, talk about Ivy. Mean, nobody's got a bigger nose than you, Audrey Roberts. Oh. <laughs> How many times? Just watch me, let's look at it. Don't leave the stock on the floor. I've told you many, many times. And go and get it on the shelf, please. <clears throat> oh, Father. Don't forget your uh, basket. Most essential. Especially if you're feeding your flock. Eh? <laughs> oh, yes. And you couldn't pick a better store than Better Buy to do it, definitely. Actually, I'm not here to shop. No? Oh? Not to shoplift, I hope and trust. <laughs> Actually, no, I just wanted a quick word with one of my parishioners. She works here and I was in the vicinity. Oh, well, so long as it is just a quick word and uh, not a full confession. <laughs> uh, what's her name? Mrs. Brennan. Uh, Mrs. Brennan, I might have thought as much. Oh, actually, um, there she is, excuse me. Hello, Ivy. Hello, Father. What are you doing here? I didn't know you shopped I, I... I don't. I'm here to see you. Oh. I... I wouldn't normally have tracked you down, but I, I'm going away tomorrow for a few weeks, and uh, once I start a mission, I'd like to see it through. I've... I've just come from Donald. Have you? We didn't get a chance the other afternoon to discuss the incident between Nicky and his... Yes, uh, you will have difficulty finding a word to describe Martin's relationship with Nicky, Father. As I do. Yeah, um, uh, Ivy, I, I fully understand you're wanting to see Nicky brought up in the faith, and I heartily endorse it. I, I would, wouldn't I? Well, I should hope so, yes. Uh, but there, there does seem to be some doubt about your motives here. No, there's nothing wrong with my motives. I just want what's the best for Nicky. And do you know what's best for him, do you? Well, of course I do, Father. It's what Brian would have wanted. Ivy, Brian has gone. You cannot replace him in Nicky's life. He's got a perfectly good and loving mother, for one thing. Yes, well, what would she know? Enough to make him a happy lad, and that is a precious gift. 
I, I'm not asking you to stop giving them all the benefit of your experience. I found it helpful myself, but for the Lord's sake, Ivy, you must do it gently, not like a runaway piano. It's, it's much more effective. Hey, I thought I'd better warn you, Mr. Snoop has been watching you. And I mustn't get you into trouble, Ivy. We, we'll have another chat when I come back. Yes, Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Father. <laughs> what did he want? <clears throat> Oh, and uh, thank you for letting me speak to Mrs. Brennan, Mr... Holdsworth, Reginald Holdsworth, manager. Anyway, <clears throat> always glad to be a service to the church, Father. If there's anything you can do, there's no way. Well, there certainly is. Um, our weekly rattle in St. Luke's, if you could care to contribute a prize, it'd be more than welcome. A prize? Well, anything at all. <clears throat> there we go. Smashing in. God bless you, Mr. Hamsworth. Is that it, Mrs. Brennan? Or do we expect a visit from Uncle Tom Cobbler? This is a supermarket, you know. Not somewhere for you to hold court. But would you like me to assign you a little private room where you can discuss things with your family and the priesthood in private? Would you like that, would you? I'm speaking to you, Mrs. Brennan. Or am I not persona rata here? Look, she's upset, Mr. Oldsworth. Oh, what do you think I am? Mrs. Brennan, just one minute. I'm not having it. Come in. Give up on that motor if I were you. Get a death certificate. Why? You've heard of people laying hands on people, haven't you, eh? To, to heal them? Well, that's what I do. We clapped out motors. Uh, well, seeing is believing. I was hoping to catch it, actually. Oh, aye. You don't want discount on a service, do you? Because you've no chance. I'm charging rock bottom as it is. Yeah, well, it's not about a service. Uh, remember that time you put that money on that horse for me? Well, of course I do. You cleaned up, and so did I. Yeah, well, can you do it again? Same reason. Strictly no staff betting, out of order. Will you do it for us? Yeah, of course I will. Lovely. Right. He's 100 quid. Two o'clock, hey, Doc. Society bell. It'll be at least tens, so don't miss out. Put a few quid on yourself. That's a nice way to treat an old maid. Come in. I was just on my way back to work. Oh, where is work these days? Still with Caught the... the shop. And I've gone full circle. Join the club. Where's Phil Jennings? Oh, long gone. Back to his wife. No. Yes. So anyway, where have you suddenly budded up from? You know, everyone keeps asking me that. After the uh, fiasco with Jackie, I went down to London. Nothing doing, so I came back here. And? And what? What have you got up your sleeve? <laughs> you make me sound like a magician. Or well, like a con man. There you go, insulting me again. Oh, is he getting sensitive in his old age? Anyway, I better get back to work or else Alf will be docking me meagre wages. Oh, what about a drink sometime, eh? My diary isn't exactly full. Nor mine. Oh, I don't believe that for a minute. <laughs> I have to have Jen, I've got a favourite from yesterday. It's going to be one making a strong uh, input today at 115. Seven horses in this race. I didn't expect you to come, to come here and put it on. I'm sorry. Should I go somewhere else? No, it's too late. 20 quid for yourself as well, mate, eh? You won't regret this. He's got his instructions, as he, your husband. Another Barney with Jacko and he's out. Oh, I don't think you've anything to worry about. Hi, love. Please, love. Are you uh, not going to buy Jack a drink? Not particularly who I drink with. Don't start. Seems such a shame, Jack. What does it? Carrying on this silly quarrel, when there's very likely nothing to quarrel about now. Isn't that right, Jim? Oh, uh, now, come on, do me a favour. You still want your extension building? You're just waiting for your planning permission. But me and Alvira, we're going to get more signatures on that petition and that'll put a block on you. Which you've every right to do. I mean, you're only protecting your own home, aren't you? Nobody wants to stop you doing that. Certainly not us, do we, Jim? No, no, no. See, what you should have done before you got all your plans and, and your footings, you see, you should have come and had a quiet word with me and I would have put you straight, wouldn't I? And I told you it was a balmy idea, especially with an on-the-ball neighbour like I am. We should, Jack. Shouldn't we, Jim? Uh, yeah. Hey, go on. 
I'll have a drink with you. Anybody can make a mistake. Half a bit, sir. I'll tell you what, the only two names they'll get in that petition will be their own names. We'll get planner permission, don't you worry about that. Probably. So what the hell was that all about? It's called taking the heat out of the situation. Well, I'm still going ahead with this now, Liz. Let's get that straight, all right? Jim back down, then? Jack thinks he has. Jim thinks he hasn't. That sounds like it was hatched under a perm. <laughs> Where else? Well, 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 it's turned up. You right. just can't keep away, can you? Before you ask me what I'm doing here, give us a large scotch, please. You'll still get asked. <laughs> Michael, what a pleasure to see you. Reciprocated, Alex. Is a flying visit, is it? Uh, options open. Ah, that's the way I keep moving. Nothing sticks then, either debts or women. Has he told you what he's doing back here? No. Good. Is it uh, business? Could be. Something big? Could be. Really? But I've got a problem. Perhaps you can help me with it. Your problems are mine, Michael. Mm -hmm. And then to convince the now, it's Society Bell, Keeley, Dr. Jen, Jen, and the back of this computer chaos. Ken's come back in fine form, just behind Tickling Tom, Lucky Linda, and Mice and Shelley, just in the rear of Jackson's line, and Campbell's challenge. Society Bell jumps the 14, still well clear of Dove Jen and Computer Chaos, but Ken's comeback falls and badly hampers Lucky Linda. The rest are over without any problems, though, and it's Society Go Bell on. really making good ground now from the favourite of yes! Jen. She's in at least go 10 minutes ahead now, and it's promising the young horse. Go looking on. so good as well, approaching the final. Go, go, go! go. Tom challenges a tiring Dove Jen in second place, and Computer Chaos being hard ridden in the fifth, but getting nowhere. And Society Bell. Society Bell's fallen. Fallen, my goodness. It's Duff Jen coming out. Now, the final flight, Society Bell trying to remand, but it's Duff Jen and being very strong in challenge by Tickling. No. Oh. Yeah. Nikki? All right, mate. Look, I've got a proposition to put to you. Hey, 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 come here. Hear me out. You might just think it's fantastic. Now, I know you're dead nuts about not playing footy for the altar boys. So, I thought to myself, why don't you come and play for us? Well, you won't be able to play in a match because you're too young. But, well, you could always come training with us, couldn't you? I mean, we've got Tony Steenson there, the team manager, used to play for Lyde, and he was a striker, which is your position. So you're about to get a few tips, aren't you? And then, well, maybe when you get back to school, you might be like Roy the Rovers compared to your mates, eh? So what do you say? You could come with us Thursdays if you want. But this Thursday? Yeah. I got two words out of him then, didn't I? Hey, can't be bad. Hmm? Five, four, three, two, one. Right. It's ten to six. I'm going to lock up. Oh, do please, please, my head's aching, my feet are killing me, and I've got my hand in three places. <laughs> well, at least you can have an early night. You haven't got three kids to sort out like me. Sorry, chip pan's been locked away for the night. Oh, there goes my tea. Actually, I just want to wear it out there. In that case, you may, Thank you. sir. I, uh, I was wondering if you were free tonight. Oh, well, if you're going to talk, smog tea. Oh, shut up, girl. Take no notice of her. I uh, just wanted to return the favour. And buy you a meal. Okay, I would be delighted. Good, I'll pick you up about eight. Fine. Good. Bye, girl. Bye, Ken. Shut the door behind you. Suddenly feeling better. Oh. Headache gone, feet like spring chicken. Well, I couldn't turn him down, could I? Did you want to? No, I didn't. He has made an impression. <laughs> Room all right, then? Couldn't be better. Oh, uh, well, come on, what you're used to? Five star hotels. It's where I want to be, though, Alec. Back on my old patch. Well, I can't think why. I mean, recent experiences in this neck of the woods haven't been all that good, have they? Quite the opposite, in fact. Still got some fond memories. Uh, give me a chance to get to London. I'll snatch your hand up. London's not what it's cracked out to be, you know. Too big a pond and too many big fish. There to be a big fish in this stagnant pool, do you? <laughs> You found out what he's up to and why he wants to stop here? Yeah, well, I guess the Mona Lisa smile. Don't you mean the shark grin? No, no. Sure. Jack tells me you thought better of it then. Well, well, you didn't think you'd get away with it, did you? We must have done for all the old chance. Trying to pull a stroke like that, living next door to us. What do you think we are, morons? <laughs> they are. What did I tell you? They've already convinced themselves that would. You've got to be a psychologist, love. I am one. I have to be living with you. Thank you, Dunn. <coughs> Cheers. 
Oh, come on. We're not going to have another silent night, are we? You still haven't told me what you said to Father O'Rourke yet. Mind you, I can guess the stick I got from him. You asked me to put him in the picture. I put him in the picture. Painting me as black as the fire back in the process. I told him the truth. The truth is, Don, that I'm simply trying to point Nicky in the right direction. The direction that's how Brian would want him in. It's coming to summit when your own priest can't understand that. Mind you, I always thought you were trendy. Well, Bayek, everybody who's not for you is against you, Alec. No! And listen to people, Ivy. Stop upsetting people, including me. Well, <clears throat> did he say anything? Not about you know what. <clears throat> He's stringing me along, you know, I'm sure of it. His little eyes pop when I suggested he comes training with us. It's an offer he can't refuse, I'm telling you. Well, he's making a very good stab at refusing. And if he's still not speaking to you by the time that social worker comes tomorrow, you adopting him goes out the window. She's not going to recommend somebody he's not speaking to to be his dad. So there you are again, you see. You're blaming me I'm for not everything. Blaming you are! You. I'm not! <sighs> yeah, well. So wait and see, won't we? I mean, come tomorrow morning. He'll be all over me. I know him, I know his game, he's cute. I do. Can I have a drink of milk? Yes, sir. Yes, I'll have to clean your teeth again afterwards. Nicky? What? <laughs> you spoke to me then, didn't you, pal? You did. <laughs> yes, you did. Now then, about this training lark. You fancy it or what? I reckon, come the end of the season, you could be playing for the town team. And I might even throw a pair of trainers into the bargain. How's that, grab you? Eh? I'm not coming training with you, and I'm not playing football with you either. Hey! <sighs> Awkward little. Go by adoption. Second as well, his shot handed on the line by defender, giving Steve. You watching this? this what does it look like? Looks like you're just staring at it to me. Come on, Kev, what's the matter? Nothing. You've hardly said a word all night, you've not even spoken to Rosie. Took you all your time to give her a good night kiss. Is it getting you down not having enough money? Because it's not going to be like this forever, Kevin, honestly it's not. If you want, you could borrow a couple of pounds from my piggy bank. Where are you going? Down the pub. You haven't got any money, Kevin! And don't forget you can catch up with any episodes you may have missed in our omnibus edition that's on Saturday morning at nine. Next today, the villagers deal with the aftermath of Kelly's party and it's not a pretty sight in Emmerdale.